Toronto loses out in the Shohei Ohani sweepstakes. After days of speculation, the generational Japanese baseball player chooses to stay in L.A. and picks the Dodgers over the Blue Jays. Shohei Ohani posted on his Instagram account this afternoon that he is signing with the Los Angeles Dodgers. The deal is reportedly worth $700 million U.S. over 10 years. It's the richest contract in sports history. Ohtani thanked his former team, the Los Angeles Angels, and pledged to always do his best for his new team. But the Post made no mention of the Jays, rumored to have been in on the bidding for the 29-year-old. Otani's unique skill set as both a prolific power hitter and above-average pitcher drove the price to sign him to record-breaking heights. Otani will be in Toronto next season with the Dodgers for a three-game series starting Friday, April 26th. Joining us for more on this historic day for baseball and the Dodgers is journalist Steve Futterman in Los Angeles. Steve, thank you so much for joining us. Well, great to be with you. I'm standing just outside Dodger Stadium and obviously a day of celebration for Dodger fans, not a day of celebration for fans of many other teams, including the Blue Jays. It was very interesting as these negotiations went on. They were really kept under the table. Otani made it very clear he did not want anyone to be talking about him. He did not want this to become sort of a a public forum of where he was going to go. But we did get an idea of which teams were in contention. In the end, the Dodgers, I think, offered him a number of things that he wanted. He wanted the money, of course, but that was going to come from, from any team pretty much. He was going to get over a, a half billion dollars, we felt, for this 10-year contract. In the end, it's a quite a bit more than that. But he also said he wanted to play for a contender. And the Dodgers have been a contender for many, many years. They've, they've only won one World Series in recent years. That was in the 2020 COVID year. But they've been very close a number of times. The Angels, unfortunately for them, he, they were never really in contention to make even the playoffs. So I think that was one of the main reasons that attracted him to the Dodgers, at least as far as we know right now. And, of course, very disappointing for those of us here in Toronto. Yes. But uh, let's talk about what he will mean for the brand of uh, the Dodgers. We know that they're, uh, as you said, it, it's a well-known franchise. It is a brand. But what kind of impact will Otani have with the Dodgers uh, that he couldn't have in, in Anaheim? Well, he'll bring the merchandising, ancillary profits, which he would have done with any team, be it the Blue Jays, the Angels, the Giants, the Cubs. Those were the teams that we were really hearing about contending for him, willing to offer him that kind of money. But he may put the Dodgers over the top. The last couple of years, they've come very close. This year, they were knocked out by the Arizona Diamondbacks in the divisional series. Last year, they were knocked off in the championship series by the San Diego Padres. With his ability, they think that may be the missing piece that will put him over the top. Now, very interestingly enough, he is well known because he is sort of a unique player in the sense that he pitches and hits and does both very, very well. I mean, he won the MVP this year. He was a unanimous choice, but he did have elbow surgery earlier this year. He is not going to be able to pitch at all next season. The earliest he'll be able to pitch is in 2025. And we also know that sometimes after surgery, some pitchers do not respond that well. So there's a bit of a gamble here. His hitting, though, he'll be able to hit. He'll primarily be a designated hitter, although he may play some right field. When he's a pitcher, he usually just does the DH. But now that he will be no longer pitching, he might do some, some fielding as well. But there is a bit of a gamble for the Dodgers in the sense that he is damaged goods to some degree right now with that elbow. Uh, such elegance if you're watching those pictures that we were just showing people of him in action. Now, yes, those of us here in Toronto are crushed. I think we're trying to get to the bottom of yesterday's frenzy, the thinking that the Blue Jays had a chance to yeah. get him. We're trying to get to the bottom of was this just a dream? Was it a myth? Was it wishful thinking? Steve, from your end, was there anything to suggest that he didn't want to stay in L.A.? Listen, there were plenty of things to suggest that Toronto was a very attractive alternative. And my guess right now, having read between the, the lines and from my sources, I do think the Blue Jays were very likely his second choice. Now, did this become a bidding war at the end? Might the Blue Jays have offered $600 million U.S. and the Dodgers came up with $700 million? I will say this. The $700 million may have been the difference. We were not hearing that kind of money being talked about in the last few days. We were hearing $500 million, $600 million. The Dodgers, by the way, along with the New York Mets, are the richest 
franchise in the sport as far as how much their owners have in their pockets to give away. And they're going to be giving a lot away for Shohei Otani. So it may have been a situation where uh, the money was a factor. Also, the Dodgers do compete for championships. The Blue Jays have come close, but not nearly as close as the Dodgers. And finally, he likes Southern California. This is only going to be 50 kilometers from Angel Stadium, where he plays, has played now, up to Dodger Stadium, where I'm at right now. So it's a nearby commute. He likes the area. So I think all these things may have been a factor. I do think, though, the Blue Jays were in contention to the very end. Tough to compete with the sunshine and $700 million. Thank you so much, Steve Futterman, joining us from Los Angeles. Thank you, Steve.